So one thing that I think generally sucks about the mobile ecosystem is that like you have these two gatekeeper companies, Apple and Google, that can tell you what you're allowed to build. And there are lots of times in our history. So there's the economic version of that, which is like, all right, we build something and they're just like, I'm going to take a bunch of your money. But then there's the, there's the, um, the qualitative version, which is actually what kind of upsets me more, which is there's a bunch of times when we've launched or wanted to launch features and then Apple's just like, nope, you're not launching that. I was like, that sucks, <laughs> right? The question is, what is like, are we kind of set up for a world like that with AI where like you're going to get a handful of companies that run these closed models that are going to be in control of the APIs and therefore going to be able to tell you what you can build? Um, well, for one, I can say for, for us, it is worth it to go build a model ourselves to make sure that we're not in that position, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't want any of those other companies telling us what we can build. Um, but from an open source perspective, I think a lot of developers don't want those companies telling them what they can build either. And this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm kind of philosophically so pro open source is I do think that a concentration yeah. of AI in the future has the potential to be as dangerous mm -hmm. as kind of it being widespread. So I think a lot of people are, you know, they, they think about the questions of, Okay, well, if we can do this stuff, is it bad for it to be out wild, like just in, in yeah. kind of widely a, a available? Um, I think another version of this is like, okay, well, it's probably also pretty bad for one institution to have an AI that is way more powerful than everyone else's AI. I kind of think that a world where AI is very widely deployed in a, in a way where it's gotten hardened um, progressively over time. And is one where all the different systems will be in check yeah. in a way that seems like it is fundamentally more healthy to me than one where this is more concentrated. So and there are risks on all sides, but I think that that's one risk that I think people, I don't hear them talking about quite as much. The $10 billion model. Suppose it's, it's totally safe. You've done these evaluations. Would you open source that, the $10 billion model? Well, I mean, as long as it's helping us, then yeah. But would it like to $10 billion of R&D and then now it's like open source? We have a long history of open sourcing software, right? We don't tend to open source our product, right? So it's not like we, we don't take like the code for Instagram and make it open source, but we take like a lot of the low level infrastructure and we make that open source, right? The, the, probably the biggest one in our history was open compute project where we took the designs for kind of all of our, um, our servers and network switches and data centers and made it open source and ended up being super helpful because, you know, I mean, a lot of people can design servers, but now like the industry standardized on our design, which meant that the supply chains basically all got built out around our design and the volumes went up. So it got cheaper for everyone and saved us billions of dollars. So awesome, right? Okay. So there's multiple ways where open source, I think could be helpful for us. One, is if people figure out how to run the models more cheaply, well, we're going to be spending tens or like a hundred billion dollars or more over time um, on all this stuff. So if we can do that 10% more effectively, we're saving billions or tens of billions of dollars. Okay, that's probably worth a lot by itself. As far as the open source goes, I'm actually curious if you think the impact of the open source from PyTorch, React, Open Compute, these things has been bigger for the world than even the social media aspects of Meta. Because I've like talked to people who use these services who think like it's plausible. Because a big part of the internet runs on these things. Uh, it's, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think almost half the world uses our yeah, that's our, a trick point. <laughs> so, um, so I I think it's hard to beat that. But no, I think I think open source is it's really powerful as a new way of building things.